Good evening. Um, I am Dr. Marish Basharan from Coimbatore. Here today we are going to discuss about uh, some important MCQs from a specific topic, the basic periodontia. What are all the MCQs? Uh, they will uh, going to uh, ask in our NEET exam on basic concepts. First question is the width of attached gingiva. The width of attached gingiva option A is increases with age and supra eruption of teeth and decreases with pocket formation, both of the above and another bow. Actually, gingiva has three parts. Okay, first is free gingiva or marginal gingiva, attached gingiva, free gingiva, marginal gingiva. Huh? Gingiva. Okay. Gingiva or marginal gingiva extend from the gingival sulcus to the marginal groove. Free gingiva or marginal gingiva extend from the gingival sulcus to the marginal groove. Whereas attached gingiva extends from the marginal groove to the mucogingival junction. Beyond the mucogingival junction is the alveolar mucosa. Beyond the mucogingival junction is the alveolar mucosa. Okay. Here the question is the width of attached gingiva increases with age and supra eruption of the teeth. Actually, the width of attached gingiva increases with the age and supra eruption of the teeth because the gingiva will move along with the tooth, supra eruption of the tooth in some cases, and there will be increase in the width of attached gingiva. And the width of attached gingiva also increases with decreases with pocket formation. When there is a pocket formation, there will be a decrease in the width of attached gingiva because there will be no change in the mucogingival junction, but there will be only decrease in the width of the attached gingiva. Therefore, the answer of the first question will be uh, both of the above. That is, the width of attached gingiva increases with the age and supra eruption of the teeth and decreases with pocket formation. Next is the second question. In cementum, cementocytes are contained in individual spaces known as lamellae, canaliculae, lacunae, and none of the above. Actually, lamellae is sheets, okay, and canaliculae is the connection between the lacunae. Lacunae is the space in which the cells will locate. Lacunae means the space in which the cells will locate, and canaliculae is the uh, connection between the two lacunae, and the, uh, it is called canaliculae. Uh, lamellae is just sheets, sheets is called lamellae. Okay, the, in, uh, the question is in cementum, cementocytes are contained in the individual spaces known as, it should not be lamellae and it won't be canaliculae also, it must be lacunae because uh, it is cells will be contained in spaces, uh, as I already told, it must be lacunae. Canaliculae is just a connection between the lacunae is called canaliculae. Therefore, the answer should be C. Uh, cells, uh, uh, when, when coming for cementum, there are two types of cementum, is the cellular cementum and the acellular cementum. The acellular cementum is the first formed cementum and it is of two types, acellular, afibrillar cementum and acellular extensic fiber cementum, acellular, afibrillar cementum and acellular extensic fiber cementum. Okay. And uh, cellular cementum is of two types, cellular which is stratified cementum and cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Okay, cellular intrinsic fiber cementum, it is of two types. Totally cementum will be of four types um, according to Schroeder's classification. That a cellular cementum is formed before the tooth reaches the occlusal plate. Before the tooth erupts into the occlusal plate, a cellular cementum will be formed. Okay. A cellular atypular cementum will be present in the coronal cementum and A cellular 
extrinsic fiber symptom a cellular extrinsic fiber symptom it's the a very important part it is of thickness of 30 to 230 micron meters it is of thickness of 30 to 230 micron meters and in this a cellular extrinsic fiber symptom is the commonest part in which the sharpest fibers will be inserted sharpest fibers that is a um, uh, sharpest fibers is a periodontal ligament fibers periodontal fiber uh, fibers um, it will be inserted into the bone as well as into the symptom and it is called sharpest fibers these sharpest fibers will be inserted mostly in the a cellular extrinsic fibers symptom the extrinsic fiber denotes the sharpest fibers only okay uh, and the cellular mixed stratified cementum, it has both um, extrinsic fibers as well as intrinsic fibers. It has both extrinsic fibers. Some of the sharpest fibers will be present, and whereas some intrinsic fibrillar content will be there in the cellular mixed stratified cementum. Okay, it is found commonly in the apical third. Okay, cellular mixed stratified cementum will be commonly in the apical third and percussion areas, and it will be of greater thickness when compared to. A cellular extrinsic fiber symptom. Okay, then it was cellular intrinsic fiber symptom. Cellular intrinsic fiber symptom. Um, cellular intrinsic fiber symptom. It is only in the present in the uh, repair areas where the repair activity is more common. So, symptom repair activity is more common and disruption activity is more common. So, this symptom will be replaced by cellular intrinsic fiber symptom. Okay. These are the four types of symptom in the, um, according to Schroeder's classification. Um, a cellular, a fibrillar symptom uh, is, is formed only by a cellular, a fibrillar symptom is formed only by symptoblast and a cellular extrinsic fiber symptom is formed by symptoblast only and a cellular intrinsic, a cellular intrinsic fiber symptom first is a cellular, a fibrillar symptom is formed by um, Symptoblast and the acellular extrinsic fiber symptom is formed by cementoblast as well as uh, intrinsic fibular form fibroblast also. Okay. Uh, coming to the cellular intrinsic fiber symptom, the cellular intrinsic fiber symptom has cementocyte. The cementocyte will be present in the lacune. Okay. And this is the uh, figure which is regarding to our requestion. Okay, cellular intrinsic fiber symptom will be uh, have cementocyte which will be present into the lacunae in the lacunae around the lacunae you see you can see the um, canaliculi extending from the lacunae which will connect through other lacunae also therefore uh, cellular intrinsic fiber symptom is the um, has cementocyte in the lacunae which is interconnected by canaliculi therefore the answer for this question is in cementum the cementocytes are contained in the individual spaces known as lacunae which of the following changes in gingiva is not identified with aging? Um, decrease connective tissue cellularity, diminish characterization, reduced or unchanged amount of stippling, decrease width of atta gingiva. Okay. Um, in gingiva, there will be diminished characterization. Diminished characterization will be seen in with aging. Okay. Diminished characterization will be seen with aging okay there will be reduced in stippling also reduced in stippling also will be present stippling will be reduced actually stippling um, will be appeared by five years of age and it will be reduced with uh, after reaching the old age into the stip amount of stippling will be reduced okay therefore answer c is also correct okay um decrease connective tissue cellularity the connective tissue cellularity actually the number of cells in the connective tissue will be reduced in number whereas the increase in the elastic fibers will be seen in the connective tissue there will be increase in the elastic fibers whereas the number of cells will be reduced in number okay whereas the number of cells will be reduced in number but with the aging there will be increase in width of attached gingiva with if increase in age, there will be increase in width of attached gingiva. This picture clearly shows the how there will be increase in width of attached gingiva with aging. Okay, when compared to D, D the D shows that it is a um, D represents the 
it's a passive eruption okay passive eruption means the tooth won't erupt but the gingiva will recede leads to the exposure of the tooth root surface d it is a passive eruption and a it's a normal tooth with a uh, gingival margin and cementonormal junction in uh, case of b there will be uh, attrition of the tooth there will be attrition there will be attrition of the tooth which will leads to okay which will leads to uh, eruption of the tooth active eruption of the tooth here the tooth will move whereas the attached gingiva will be in the same position therefore the recession will be prominently seen uh, whereas in case of c the attached gingiva will move along with the tooth okay the attached gingiva will move along with the passive uh, active eruption of the tooth okay in such case uh, there will be increase in the width of attached gingiva okay there will be increase in width of attached gingiva on aging uh, other effects will be thinning and decreased keratinization of the gingival epithelium and flattening of retibus and the altered cell density uh, therefore the answer should be d uh, because there will be increase in width of attached gingiva with aging not a decrease in the width of attached gingiva the oxygen consumption of normal gingiva is um, 1.6 plus or minus 0.37 and 0.9 plus or minus 0.22 2.7 plus or minus 0.41 and 1.9 plus or minus 0.21 the oxygen consumption of normal gingiva will be 1.6 plus or minus 0.3137 answer is a which of the following is incorrect about langerhans cells which of the following is incorrect about langerhans cells what do what do you mean by langerhans cells langerhans cells are cells uh, present in the epithelium okay it is a clear cell it is also uh, it is a type of clear cell or non keratinocyte it is present in the epithelium it presents at the supra basal levels it belongs to mononuclear phagocytic system or reticular epithelial system the origin for langerhans cells is monocyte the langerhans cells contain g specific granules or birber granules okay it is important the mcq langerhans cells contain g specific granules or birber granules actually the location of langerhans cells is also at supra basal levels supra basal means it is not present in the basal level basal layer but it is above the basal layer that is called supra basal levels okay it belongs to reticulo endothelial system okay like histiocytes uh, uh, it is belongs to reticulo pupillary cells it belongs to reticulo endothelial system it is found in the oral epithelium of normal gingiva okay and it is also found in this very smaller amount in the circular epithelium oral epithelium of the normal gingiva it is present in normal amount whereas in circular epithelium it is present in uh, smaller amount but it is absent in normal gingiva junctional epithelium junctional epithelium of the normal gingiva is devoid of langerhans cells okay Uh, only in the disease gingiva there will be presence of langerhans cells whereas the junctional epithelium of the normal gingiva is absence of langerhans cells okay therefore which of the following is incorrect these are dendritic cells yes these are dendritic cells it is a modified mono, a form of monocytes only they are absent in junctional epithelium that's also out okay but the fourth answer is these are present in the basal layer of the oral epithelium is a wrong answer wrong option because langerhans uh, cells as i already told the previous slide it is present in the basal cell layer of the oral epithelium it is present above the basal cell layer of the oral epithelium therefore it is called uh, it is present in the supra basal layer okay langerhans cell is present in the supra basal layer okay therefore option d is wrong all of the following are true about cellular symptom except um cellular symptom as i already told it is of two types cellular mature stratified symptom and cellular intrinsic fiber symptom cellular symptom contains cytocytes okay but a cellular symptom on have cytocytes or cytoplasm and all okay there are cellular symptom contain cytocytes that is the main difference between the a cellular symptom and the cellular symptom okay 
and therefore option A it should be correct only because cellular cementum it always contains cementosides okay cellular cementum is formed after the okay cellular cementum is formed after the tooth reaches the occlusal plane okay one is after the tooth reaches the occlusal plane cellular cementum is formed whereas in case of cellular acellular cementum the cementum the acellular cementum is formed before the tooth reaches the occlusal plane therefore option b is wrong okay and cellular cementum is less calcified it is actually less calcified when compared to a cellular cementum okay it is correct on mm, the cellular cementum as i already told it has smaller amount of shortest fibers uh, when compared to uh, cmsc that is cellular mature stratified cementum has smaller amount of shortest fibers when compared to a cellular extensive fiber cementum okay smaller amount and then the option d is also correct the only option which is wrong is uh, b option because cellular cementum is formed after the tooth reaches its occlusal plane cellular cementum is formed after the tooth reaches its occlusal plane therefore the option b is the answer for this question you can you can uh, see in this picture uh first is the acellular acellular cementum okay and uh, the point i will note that uh, show you that it is a acellular acellular cementum it is one type of cementum its sub thickness will be 1 to 15 micrometer uh, its thickness of uh, 1 to 15 micrometer it's also known as coronal cementum okay acellular acellular cementum is also known as coronal cementum a cellular extensive fiber cementum okay a cellular extensive fiber cementum has predominantly shortest fibers in it shortest fibers is present much more in a cellular extensive fiber cementum when compared to cellular mature stratified cementum okay uh, you can see that a cellular extensive fiber cementum in a cellular extensive fiber cementum uh, you can see the uh, array of uh, fibers insertion fibers insertion will be clearly seen okay in the a cellular resistance fiber cementum mm, but the fibers are sharp these fibers it have insertion both in the cementum as well as in the bone okay high sharp these fibers are both insertion in cementum as well as in the bone okay but cellular mature stratified cementum so the presence of numerous cementocytes okay cementocytes in the lacrimal will be present uh, that is cellular mixed stratified cementum it also contains short piece fibers but it is less when compared to that of a cellular extensive fiber cementum cellular mixed stratified cementum is commonly present in the apical area cellular mixed stratified cementum is commonly present in the apical areas and percussion areas okay and its thickness will be much more when compared to the a cellular extensive fiber cementum. Uh, cellular cementum usually form after the tooth reaches the occlusal plane. Okay. Cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Okay. Cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Here the cementocytes, um, you can see this image, the cementocytes are clearly uh, seen in, in the lacunae. Okay. And the uh, lacunae, the radiating structures are that this is called canaliculi. There will be a connection between the lacunae through the canaliculi. Okay, cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Cellular intrinsic fiber cementum is commonly present in the uh, repair areas. Okay, repair areas it will be present. Cellular intrinsic fiber cementum will be commonly present in the repair areas. Okay. Mm. The characteristic potential potential of which of the following does not change with age. Okay. The characteristic potential of which of the following does not change with age. First is lip, cheek. Hot palate and gingiva. Okay, lip, cheek, and hot palate and gingiva. Actually, the characterizing potential of lip will change with age, whereas cheek and abdomen gingiva also will change with age, whereas the um, characterizing potential of the hot palate doesn't change with age. Okay, characterizing potential of the hot palate won't change with age. Uh, next is the glucose levels. The glucose levels in gingival cravicular fluid. The glucose levels in gingival cravicular fluid 
are equal to glucose level in serum. First option, equal to glucose level in serum. Zero, three to four times greater than serum levels. More than ten times the serum levels. Okay. Um, before going into that, the uh, GCF has common sources. Okay, GCF has sources. It has a uh, uh, the main sources of GCF. Uh, the components of GCF are uh, main source of component of GCF are microbial block, host cells, damaging host tissues, and host factors. Uh, the products of microbial block such as endotoxins. Uh, uh, enzymes uh, secreted by the uh, blocks as acid phosphatase, alkaline phosphatase, and metabolic end products like trypsin like enzyme of the bacteria uh, is a uh, main, uh, component of GCF that secreted by microbial block. There is glucocytic enzymes, lactoferrin, lysozyme, and uh, myeloperoxidase. Gluc glucocytic enzyme, lactoferrin, lysozyme, and myeloperoxidase are secreted by Fast cells and immunoglobulins IgG, IgA, IgM, complement factors, eicosanoids and cytokines are host factors uh, of immune response. Okay, it is, these factors are responsible for immune response and they are having fast charging. Actually, that uh, IgG, IgG is um, predominant immunoglobulin present in the GCF. Okay, IgG is a predominant immunoglobulin present in the GCF, whereas IgA is a predominant immunoglobulin present in the saliva. Okay, IgA is a predominant immunoglobulin present in the saliva. Okay, uh, some of the damaged host tissues also will be seen in the GCF, where the destructive activity is more. Uh, the byproducts of collagen, proteoglycans, and the matrix proteins, especially uh, osteolectin, is also present in the GCF. Uh, coming to the, the issue. Uh, Serum glucose level, the serum glucose level will be less when compared to that of GCF glucose level. Okay, the GCF glucose level will be 3 to 4 times when uh, more when compared to that of serum glucose levels. Therefore, the answer should be C. Okay, the glucose level in GCF is 3 to 4 times greater than serum levels. Next is the nu uh, uh, nuclei are absent. Next question is the nuclei are absent in striatum corneum, striatum corneum of orthokeratinate gingival epithelium and paracaratinate gingival epithelium. Okay, orthokeratinate gingival epithelium, paracaratinate gingival epithelium, none of the above and both of the above. Okay, the nuclei is absent in orthokeratinate gingival epithelium. Okay, orthokeratinate gingival whereas pycnotic nuclei will be present in the paracaratinized gingival epithelium. Okay. Uh, Paracaratinized gingival epithelium. Therefore, answer should be A. The nuclei are absent in the striatum corneum of orthokeratinized gingival epithelium. You can clearly see in this picture. The first picture is a keratinized epithelium. Keratinized epithelium, okay. Orthokeratinized. Orthokeratinized gingival epithelium. It has four layers basal layer, uh, basal layer, spinosum, granulosum, and uh, corneum, okay. Four layers will be present, whereas in the superficial layer there won't be any presence of nuclei. Okay, you can see in this image, uh, first image, there is no nuclei in the superficial layer, that corneal layer, there won't be nuclei. Whereas in non keratinized there will be three layers. Basal layer will be present, the pectoral cell layer will be present, and the superficial layer will be present. Here also, nucleus will be present. Okay. Uh, non characterized will have three layers. First is basal layer, prickle uh, uh, cell layer, and a superficial layer. Uh, the nuclei will be present in the superficial layer also. Therefore, it won't be option. Uh, whereas in para characterized layer, okay, para characterized layer, also uh, three layers will be present. Okay, basal layer, prickle cell layer, and a para keratotic layer. The para keratotic layer uh, has pycnotic nuclei. Okay. Um, in the newer question, they ask uh, the nuclei is absent in orthokeratinized epithelium. Oh, yes, orthokeratinized epithelium has striatum corneum in which there won't be any nuclei will be present. Whereas uh, parakeratinized gingival epithelium has pycnotic nuclei in relation to the superficial layer. Okay, in relation to the uppermost layer, the parakeratinized gingival epithelium will have pycnotic nuclei. 
therefore the option should be a the hypercalcified lines that separate the lamellae of cellular cementum from that of a cellular cementum are known as incremental lines lines of regius or the bone or not the bone okay um lines of regius is enamel is present in enamel therefore it it, it it doesn't have any uh role in the presence of cementum under okay incremental lines will be present in cementum okay lines of regius will be present in the enamel okay therefore uh, um the option should be a incremental line okay here in this image um first image it represents the a cellular cementum in this a cellular cementum you can clearly appreciate the incremental layer okay incremental layer you can clearly appreciate in the a cellular cementum here the faded lines are present perpendicular perpendicular faded lines are present this represents the attachment of sharpie fibers okay in a cellular cementum sharpie fibers is more Uh, attachment of sharpie fibers is more uh, and this uh, uh, sharpie fibers is uh, present as faded layer in relation to the right angles to the a cellular cementum you can see this picture faded layer okay whereas in the cellular cementum you can appreciate the presence of cementocytes cementocytes are there and it is interconnected by lacuna also you can appreciate in this image um, um and the incremental lines is Uh, visible but not very pronounced when compared to a cellular cementum in a cellular cementum the incremental lines is clearly visible okay clearly, clearly visible okay uh, the answer for this question is the hypercalcified lines that separate lamellae of cellular cementum from the top a cellular cementum are called incremental lines okay next in the periodontal ligament aging um, results in increase in the number of elastic fibers decrease in the number of collagen fibers and both of the above okay in the periodontal ligament the aging results in increase in number of elastic fibers in decrease in number of collagen fibers as i already told and uh, there will be decrease in number of cells as well as there will be decrease in number of collagen fibers okay and uh, in the aging that will be increase in the number of elastic fibers okay um uh, with the aging the periodontal ligament shows increase in number of elastic fibers and decrease in the number of collagen fibers also therefore the answer should be both of the above um mm, these are some of the effects of aging on pdl first is the decrease number of fibroblasts the fibroblasts will be reduced in number okay the fibroblasts will be reduced in number and there will be decrease organic acid matrix production and the epithelial cell rust epithelial cell rust also will be decrease okay there will be increase amount of elastic fibers and the periodontal ligament cell proliferation cause decrease with age such as an impairment of repair potential there will be increase in elastic fiber only but decrease in number of fibroblasts and the decrease in number of cells such as an impairment in repair potential the periodontal ligament therefore the aging results in increase in the number of elastic fibers as well as decrease in the number of collagen fibers also the striatum granulosum okay striatum granulosum is absent in orthokeratinous epithelium parakeratinous epithelium both of the above or none of the above okay striatum granulosum is present in orthokeratinous epithelium is absent in orthokeratinous epithelium parakeratinous epithelium both of the above actually the striatum granulosum is present in orthokeratinous epithelium because it has as i already told it has four layers that is basal layer um uh see this basal layer, basal cell layer is present then a flat fecal cell layer is present then a uh, horny layer is also present and granular layer is also present okay basal layer fecal cell layer granular layer and the horny layer is present in the ortho keratinized okay whereas uh, in relation to para keratinized the basal layer fecal uh, cell layer is present but the granular layer is absent here okay granular layer is absent whereas uh, the superficial layer is a para keratotic layer with a pignotic nuclei okay uh, therefore in uh, mm, uh, 
Tara characterized, Tara characterized, Tara characterized epithelium. Okay, the granulosome layer will be absent. As well as in non characterized epithelium, the granulosome layer will be absent. Granulosome layer will be only present in the ortho keratinized epithelium. Okay, therefore the answer should be B. Okay, the state of granulosome is absent in paracarotinous epithelium. The same question is asked. Uh, the state of granulosome is present in, then the answer should be ortho epithelium. Uh, coming to the incremental lines of symptom. Okay, the incremental lines of symptom. Uh, uh, presents active periods of symptom formation, rest periods of symptom formation, both of the above. As I have been told, that incremental lines of symptom is present in both uh, cellular symptom as well as ASMR symptom, but the uh, visibility will be much more pronounced in the ASMR symptom. Okay, visibility will be much more pronounced in ASMR symptom as compared to the cellular symptom. Um, this incremental lines represents the Rest period of symptom formation, not active period. This incremental lines will represent the rest period of symptom formation. Okay. Um, a reduction in width of periodontal ligament with aging is due to actually the periodontal ligament will be uh, there will be reduction in width of periodontal ligament because there, there is an increase in force and there is an increase in functional demand. There will be an increase in width of the periodontal ligament. Whereas Okay, when there is a reduction in the width of the uh, periodontal ligament in uh, tooth which is, has no antagonist. Okay, in the tooth which has no antagonist, there will be a reduction with width of the periodontal ligament because there will be a decreased load on the tooth and therefore disuse atrophy will be present. There will be, therefore, there will be a decrease in the width of periodontal ligament. Uh, this also occurs when there is a lower functional demand owing to decrease in strength of plastic ST musculature. With aging, there will be a decrease in strength of plastic ST musculature. Okay, there will be a decrease in strength of plastic ST musculature. This will lead to decreased force on the periodontal ligament, and therefore there will be a decrease in the reduction in width of periodontal ligament. Therefore, there will be a decrease in width of periodontal ligament. Okay, therefore the option should be A. The low functional demand owing to decrease in the strength of masticative musculature is the option. The Merkel cells. The Merkel cells, um, as I already told, they are clear cells or non keratinocytes. Okay, clear cells uh, includes uh, Langerhorn cells, melanocytes, Merkel cells. Okay. Merkel cells, Langerhans cells, and melanocytes are clear cells or non keratinocytes. Uh, whereas keratinocyte is the most predominant cell of the epithelium. Okay, keratinocyte is the most predominant cell of the epithelium. Merkel cells is a, um, is a tactile receptors. Okay, Merkel cells is a tactile receptors. Uh, tactile receptors. Okay. Um, Merkel cells is present in the deeper layer, okay, deeper layer of the epithelium is present. It harbors nerve endings, nerve endings are common, okay, nerve endings are present and it is a tactile perceptor. Tactile sensation will be received by the Merkel cells, okay, of the epithelium will be received by the Merkel cells, okay. Merkel cells will be present only in the deeper layer of the epithelium, you should know that, okay. Next is the Langerhorn cell. Langerhorn cell is a dendritic cell. Or antigen presenting cells, okay. Antigen, antigen presenting cells, okay. It is an antigen presenting cells, it is a morphic form of monocyte immune reaction. Um, it, it also participates in immune reaction because it is an antigen presenting cell. Uh, it is present in the supra basal layers, it is not present in the basal layer. It is also important question, okay. Liner horn cells is present in the supra basal layer of the epithelium, okay. And Langerhorn cells contains these specific granules or Birbal granules. It is also an important MCQ. Okay, Langerhorn cells contains Birbal granules or these specific granules. Langerhorn cells is found in the oral epithelium. The normal number it is found in the oral epithelium. Sulcular epithelium is found in reduced number. Okay, when compared to oral epithelium, whereas in junctional epithelium, uh, normal junctional epithelium, Langerhorn cells is absent. Okay, melanocyte. Melanocyte is also a dendritic cell. It is a non-keratinocyte. 
Um, it is present in the basal layer and spinous layers of the epithelium. Um, it is uh, st uh, stored in the melanosomes, okay? Melanosomes or free melanosomes. The melanin is synthesized and is stored, okay? Melanin is synthesized in the melanosomes. So, as it is stored in melanophages, okay? It is secreted in melanosomes and stored in melanophages, okay? In melanosomes, the tyrosine will be converted to dihydroxyphenyl alanine. The tyrosine is converted to dihydroxyphenyl alanine. The help of tyrosinase enzyme. The dihydroxyphenyl alanine is converted to melanin with the help of the C tyrosinase enzyme. And the formed melanin will be stored in the melanophores or melanophages. Okay. The pre melanosomes are melanosomes. Um, pre melanosomes uh, pro, pro form of melanosomes and the melanosomes only that uh, melanin will be secreted. The secreted melanin will be stored in the melanophores and the melanophages or melanophages. Okay. Merkel cells or tactile receptors. Okay, it is not an antigen present cell. Merkel cell is a tactile receptor only. Um, uh, one option they have given is it is present in the superficial layers. But Merkel cells, as I already told, it is present in the deeper layer of the epithelium. Uh, therefore, A won't be an option. And uh, B is also not an option because uh, only the Langerhorn cells or antigen present cells. Okay, Langerhorn cells or antigen present cells. Uh, tactile perceptors, medical cells are actually tactile perceptors which are present in the deeper layers of the epithelium. Total inorganic content of the cement tub is, uh, it is a straight answer, it is uh, around 45 to 50 percent, okay, 45 to 50 percent contains calcium phosphorus in hydroxy apatite form, okay, hydroxy apatite form, the inorganic content of the cement tub will be present in such forms only, calcium. Okay, and phosphorus in hydroxy apatite form. Um, the strength of the symptom will be the inorganic content. Uh, the symptom will be 45 to 50 percent. Changes in the alveolar bone with aging or osteoporosis will be present. In uh, anti aging, osteoporosis will be commonly present. There will be decrease in nerve clarity also will be present in, in alveolar bone with aging, and there will be decrease healing capacity is also present in. Alveolar bone with aging. Okay, therefore the answer will be all of the above. Mm. D will be the answer. Next is the cellular epithelium. Cellular epithelium is semi-permeable in nature. Yes, cellular epithelium is semi-permeable in nature because it, it cannot allow all the substance to pass through it. Cellular epithelium is non-keratinized. Actually, cellular epithelium is a non-keratinized epithelium. Okay. Uh, it can be characterized. When we expose the cellular epithelium to the oral cavity, it will be characterized. Okay. Um, therefore, the answer will be all of the above. Cellular epithelium is semi permeable in nature because it won't allow all the things to pass through it. Cellular epithelium is non characterized and the cellular epithelium will become characterized only when exposed to the, when we are exposing it to the oral cavity. Uh, all the three answers are correct, therefore the answer will be T. Um, here uh, we can see this in this image that cellular epithelium extends from the gingiva to the junctional epithelium. Okay, margin of the gingiva to the junctional epithelium. Cellular epithelium will be present. Um, uh, it lines the gingival sulcus. Okay, cellular epithelium lines the gingival sulcus. Um, Behind the circular epithelium, venous fluxes will be present. Uh, from the venous fluxes will be, there will be secretion of gingival cranicular fluid. The gingival cranicular fluid will pool into the uh, circular, uh, uh, through the circular epithelium into the gingival sulcus. Okay. Normally, the depth of the gingival sulcus in a germ free rat will be zero, or in the absolute uh, fist in gingiva, the, uh, that. Uh, Depth of the cellular uh, sulcus depth will be zero. Whereas the histological depth of sulcus will be 1.8. Okay, this is also one of the important signals. Histological depth of uh, sulcus is 1.8, whereas the normal probing depth uh, of sulcus in an adult is 2 to 3 mm. Okay, 2 to 3 mm. Here in this picture, you can uh, See this uh, image, okay? Epithelial cells, and so this is a uh, scanned electroscopic view of a 
Shamkla epithelium. Uh, here the L denotes the emergence of leukocytes. The leukocyte also will emerge only through the uh, Shamkla epithelium. Only. It will also emerge only through the Shamkla epithelium. The leukocyte which migrate from the uh, gingival epithelium into the uh, circular through the circular epithelium into the GCF is called the orogranulocyte. And this uh, orogranulocyte will determine the uh, nature of the disease because if the orogranulocyte is higher in number, the disease activity will be high. Okay, then only the more number of leukocytes will be um, uh, move, move from the uh, epithelium through the circular epithelium into the uh, into the gingival surface. Okay. Orogranulocyte migrate rate. Uh, the rate is called orogranulocyte migrate rate. Some heterocytes also uh, present uh, move through the circular epithelium and bacterial toxins are can easily pass through the circular epithelium. But it won't allow everything to pass. Therefore, uh, the circular epithelium is selectively permeable. Okay, circular epithelium is selectively permeable. The answer will be D. Cementum. Cementum is thickest at cervical third of the roots, middle third of the roots, apical third and percussion area of the roots, uniform all of the roots. Okay. Cementum is thickest at the which area? Cervical third, middle third, apical third and percussion of the roots, uniform all. It is more thickest at the apical third and percussion of the roots because as we already discussed, uh, what we discuss about the uh, thickness of different forms of cementum. Um, SLR symptom will be uh, lesser in thickness when compared to the cellular symptom. Okay, SLR symptom or the SLR extensive fiber symptom will be of range 30 to 230 micrometer thickness only. Whereas the cellular mature stratified symptom, the thickness will be 100 to 1000 micrometer. Okay, um, the thickness will be more. Uh, the cellular symptom will be present commonly in the apical third and percussion area of the roots. And in the cervical third of the roots and middle third will be present in, will be present only with a cellular cementum. Therefore, the thickness of the cementum will be more for cellular cementum and it is present in the apical third and the percussion area of the roots. Therefore, the answer should be C. Approval behavior results in all except reduction in cuspal height, um, reduction in cuspal inclination, loss of squeeze space, um, and decrease in area. There is a uh, result occlusal here leads to uh, reduction in cuspal height. The cusp height will be reduced. Actually, the uh, cuspal inclination also will be reduced in occlusal layer. And there is a loss of squeeze space also will be present in the occlusal layer. Whereas the uh, there will be there won't be any decrease in the foot table area. When there is a occlusal layer, there won't be any decrease in the foot table area. Therefore, the answer should be D. The length of junctional epithelium and the length of junctional epithelium is 0 0.25 to 1.35 mm. Okay, the length of junctional epithelium is 0 0.25 to 1.35 mm. Junctional epithelium is a uh, non keratinized form of epithelium. Okay, it is also a semi permeable epithelium. Okay, it is also junctional epithelium is also semi permeable. Mm. The length of junctional epithelium is 0 0.25 to 1.35 mm. With age, the anterior posterior length of the dental arch will be um, reduces by approximately 0 0.5 cm by age of 40 and increases by approximately 0 0.5 cm by age of 40, remains the same by age of 40, remains the same by age of 60. Actually, the anterior posterior length of the dental arch will reduce by age of uh, uh, 40 by approximately 0 0.5 mm. There will be reduction in the anterior posterior length of the dental arch because due to uh, continuous attrition and all uh, there will be reduction in the um, uh, there will be the eruption of the tooth and there will be reduction in the proximal contact also therefore there will be a reduction in the anterior posterior length of the dental arch anterior posterior length of the dental arch and the anterior posterior length of the dental arch will reduce by approximately 0 0.5 cm by range of 40 Answer will be A. Which of the following is not a function of sulfur fluid? It helps in the removing harmful materials from the sulcus. Yes, sulfur fluid helps in the clearing of harmful materials from sulcus. It does. 
it provides plasma proteins that help in the adhesion of junctional epithelium to the nucleus then circular epithelium provides plasma proteins which help in the adhesion of junctional epithelium to the and so b is also correct circular epithelium contains antibodies yes uh, it contains igg igm and iga but igg is predominant in the circular plate it also carries and that for and so c is also correct um it helps in clot formation by formation providing glycoproteins which are important component of dental pellicle actually uh, uh, it is not a function okay it's not a function because it, it's not a function of circular fluid uh, the all the three above is a b and c are function of the circular fluid because of uh, the block formation the pedicle uh, is formed mainly by the salivary pedicle when it pedicle is the formation is the main function of saliva okay it is not a function of circular fluid uh, therefore the answer should be b Uh, the prominent thickening of cementum on the road is termed as hypercementosis cementum hyperplasia both of the above and one of the above hypercementosis is also there will be increase in thickness of cementum and hyperplasia of cementum there will also will be increase in thickening of the cementum many many number of uh, systemic conditions uh, hypercementosis will be seen and uh, the hypercementosis hyperplasia will also seen in uh, Mm, uh, cementoplastic conditions okay apical area cementum will be enlarged and all uh, cemento, benign cemental hyperplasia will be there uh, cemental hyperplasia will be commonly seen in the apical region of the root and in this also there will be a increase in the thickening of the cementum whereas in hypercementosis uh, it is present in uh, um, uh, present in the generalized conditions also some uh, example is page disease hypercementosis will be present uh, page disease hypercementosis will be present and in uh, orthodontic movement spike like uh, hypercementosis cementosis will be present and therefore uh, there will be increase in thickening of cementum on the road both in hypercementosis as well as cemental hyperplasia okay answer should be c The gingival fibers are arranged into following groups. The gingival fibers are arranged into following groups: except dentogingival group, dentoalveolar group, circular group, and transeptal group. The um, transeptal group is a type of gingival fibers. Circular group is also a type of gingival fibers. And dentogingival is also a type of gingival principal gingival fibers. But dentoalveolar group is not a type of gingival fibers. Okay, therefore the answer should be B. um here the image shows uh, um how uh, dental gingival fibers will arise it is arise in a fan like configuration okay it arises in a fan like configuration it arises from the cementum to the and uh, move towards the gingiva a uh, crest of the gingiva and also to the outer surface of the gingiva and some fibers uh, arising from the cementum and attach supraperiosteal dental periosteal fibers is also present and the round part number 4 denotes the presence of circular fibers this circular fibers will help in the bracing of the attached gingiva and bracing of the marginal gingiva over the tooth surface of okay, the tooth surface this circular fibers will help in the bracing of marginal gingiva towards the tooth surface okay these are all the uh, primary gingival fibers first is the dental gingival fibers next is transeptal fibers and uh, circular fibers transeptal fibers is involved both in the gingival fibers as well as uh, uh, principal fibers of the periodontal ligament uh, the answer should be b the fusion of cementum with the alveolar bone results in the obliteration of periodontal ligament is known as cemental hyperplasia as i already told cemental hyperplasia is just a Uh, increase in the thickness of cementum at a particular area it is commonly present in benign cemental hyperplasia and all it is commonly present hypocementosis uh, it is generalized form of increase in uh, generalized form of increase in thickness of cementum uh, example is appendix disease i have already told whereas ankylosis is the fusion of the cementum with the alveolar bone it leads to results uh, leads to obliteration of periodontal ligament therefore the cementum will be straightly fused to the bone 
without intervening periodontal ligament it is called ankylosis um ankylosis okay ankylosis um can be detected only when there is a 20 percentage of ankylosis has happened then only we can detect ankylosis clinically by percussing the tooth metallic sound will be heard okay percussing the tooth metallic sound will be heard okay by this way uh, by expression of the tooth we can clearly see the um, ankylosis by radiographically uh, there will be obliteration of periodontal ligament space and there will be uh, no intervening periodontal ligament space there will be a fusion of uh, alveolar bone into the cementum cementum with alveolar bone um, in the due course of uh, ankylosis the cementum will be gradually resolved the cementum will be gradually resolved and it is replaced completely with the alveolar bone okay and the ankylosis progress the cementum will be resolved also first there will be obliteration of periodontal ligament this is followed by um, resorption of cementum on uh, finally the every cementum is resolved there will be uh lead there will be shredding of the tooth okay in ankylosis finally there will be shredding of the tooth the cells present in the connective tissue of the gingiva includes uh, um connective tissue of the gingiva okay first option they give mast cells mast cells will be present in the connective tissue um macrophages adipose cells also will be present histiocytes also will be present eosinophils will be present mast cells uh, here also they have the option of mast cells there also connective tissue will be uh, present okay mast cells will be present in the connective tissue there is the option c they have given melanocytes uh, melanocytes are common present in the epithelial layer okay epithelial layer only melanocytes will be present okay melanocytes will be present in the epithelial layer not in the connective tissue of the gingiva okay therefore option c is wrong uh, the option for this uh, question will be a and b mast cells macro macrophages adipose cells histiocytes uh, um eosinophils are present in the connective tissue of the gingiva option is a and b ankylosed teeth is often associated with suprabony pockets Uh, actually, in the ankylosed tooth, it is not associated with any type of pockets. Okay, because a true pocket will never form in the ankylosed tooth. Ankylosed tooth, a true pocket will never form. Therefore, the option should be D. Coming to blood supply of the jaw, the main uh, blood supply of the jaw is derived from the supraperiosteal artery also. Okay, supraperiosteal vessels. vessels of the periodontal ligament and vessels enter emerging from the crest of the interventricular septum all these three will provide the supply to the gingiva therefore the answer will be all of the above here you can uh, see in this image uh, this is the interdental vessels uh, okay interdental vessels arising from the interdental septum and this is the supraperiosteal vessels uh, and the vessels arising from the pdl which are will also supply the gingiva therefore here the answer should be all of the above the coral pink color of the gingiva actually the color of the gingiva is normally as a result of uh, how the gingiva will be uh, the color of the gingiva will be pronounced because for example in attached gingiva healthy attached gingiva it is coral pink in color okay attached gingiva more gingiva this is a coral pink in color whereas in alveolar mucosa it is reddish in color okay this clearly represents the thickness of the gingival epithelium because uh, uh, in alveolar mucosa the thickness of the epithelium will be reduced therefore the vascularity will be clearly seen outside the gingiva therefore um, thickness of the gingival epithelium will be more uh, responsible for the will also be responsible for the uh, color of the gingiva okay if there is an increase in the thickness of the gingival epithelium uh, there will also be the change in the uh, color okay from the Uh, reddish to coral pink okay coral pink color will be present and there is increase in thickness of gingival epithelium a uh, vascular supply of gingiva also will be seen okay and there is a increase in vascular supply of gingiva the coral pink color will be pronounced and there will be decrease of uh, degree of characterization and there is a increase in degree of characterization the coral pink color will be seen okay whereas uh, in alveolar mucosa characterization will be less therefore the coral pink color will be 
it won't be visible okay for a pink color won't be visible in the alveolar mucosa whereas in the marginal gingiva and alveolar uh, attached gingiva the for a pink color will be present the presence of pigment containing cells when there is a increase in the presence of melanin pigment the for a pink color will be uh, affected okay the for a pink color will be affected uh, therefore uh, the vascular supply of gingiva, the thickness of the gingival epithelium, the degree of characterization of the gingival epithelium, presence of pigment containing cells, all will lead to coral pink color of the normal gingiva. Option will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. The newly formed symptom during the period of cemental repair is demarcated from the rest of the symptom by a line known as reversal line. Actually, the newly and there is a repair, okay. As seen in this picture, uh, this white arrow denotes the area of cemental repair, okay. There will be a base of cemental disruption is there, and there will be presence of uh, repair zones also will be present. And the uh, newly formed cemental uh, is demarcated from the repair cemental by the presence of uh, reversal lines, okay. Okay, it is demarcated from the rest of the symptom by the line known as reversal line. Okay, newly formed symptom during the period of cemental repair is demarcated from the rest of the symptom by the reversal line. Thinning of periodontal ligament, atrophy of fibers, and osteoporosis of alveolar bone occurs in trauma from occlusion. When there is a trauma from occlusion, there will be increase in thickening of the periodontal ligament, okay, increase in thickening of buttressing bone formation also will be present and there will be increase in the uh, length of the periodontal ligament, okay, and the cellular activity also will be more, okay, therefore in trauma from occlusion, these features won't be present. When there is excessive occlusal forces also, there will be thickening of the periodontal ligament and periodontal ligament space will be present and the buttressing bone formation will be present due to counter, okay, bone to counter the force. Therefore, here also, um, these features won't be present, but if there is insufficient occlusal forces, if there is insufficient occlusal forces, as I already told, um, there will be thinning of the periodontal ligament uh, with atrophy of fibers because of insufficient occlusal forces, disease, atro disease, uh, disease atrophy of uh, fibers will be present and there will be osteoporosis of alveolar bone also present. Um, therefore, the answer should be insufficient occlusal forces. Choose the incorrect statement. Stippling is absent in marginal gingiva. Stippling is absent in infants and appears about 5 years of age. Stippling is more prominent on the facial surface than on the lingual surface. Stippling is lost permanently in gingivitis. Okay, stippling is absent in marginal gingiva. Actually, stippling will be uh, absent in the normal gingiva. Okay, stippling will be present in the interdental, core of the interdental papilla. Okay, core of the interdental papilla and attached gingiva. Stippling will be present in the core of the interdental papilla and attached gingiva. Therefore, this option is correct. Okay, stippling is absent in infants and appears at above 5 years of age. Actually, stippling is absent in infancy and above 5 years of age it starts and by on aging and old age, the stippling once again will disappear. Okay. Uh, therefore, this option is also correct. Um, stippling is more prominent on the facial surface. Yes, stippling is more prominent on the facial surface when compared to the lingual surface. Yes, it is correct. Stippling is also very more prominent on the facial surface when compared to the lingual surface. But stippling is lost permanently in gingivitis. Okay, stippling won't lost permanently in gingivitis. Stippling uh, will be lost. Loss of stippling will be seen in gingivitis, but it is not a permanent phenomenon. Okay, it won't lost permanently. When uh, on treatment and all, the stippling will be regained. Okay, the option will be D. Here the option is wrong. Okay, the stippling is lost permanently in gingivitis. It is lost temporarily only because gingivitis is a reversible condition by treatment uh, it can be um, easily reversed okay it can be easily reversed which of the following parts of alveolar bones give attachment to the principal fibers of the periodontal ligament okay which of the following fibers parts of the alveolar bone gives attachment to the principal fibers of the periodontal ligament inner cortical plates inner cortical plates alveolar bone proper both of the above okay 
the alveolar bone gives attachment to the principal fibers of the periodontal ligament through alveolar bone proper okay alveolar bone proper and the alveolar bone proper radiographically is also known as lamina dura okay it presents with the cribriform plate okay it also presents with the cribriform plate then uh, here the same question is there another form of the same question uh, is inner wall of the tooth socket is formed by cancellous trabeculae inner cortical plates alveolar bone proper and all of the above okay inner wall of the tooth socket is formed by alveolar bone proper only it is formed by alveolar bone proper option should be c passive eruption is divided into four stages according to gottlieb it is divided into four stages uh, here the picture represents the first stage of passive eruption here the base of the gingival sulcus and the junctional epithelium are both present in the enamel the base of the uh, gingival sulcus the base of the gingival sulcus and the junctional epithelium are both present in the enamel uh, stage 2 the base of the junctional epithelium and the base of the gingival sulcus will be present in the enamel whereas the junctional epithelium will be present in the root okay part of the junctional epithelium will be present in the root okay whereas in the stage 3 the base of the gingival sulcus is at the cemento enamel line and the entire junctional epithelium is on the root okay the base of the uh, gingival sulcus is at the cemento enamel line and the entire gingival epithelium junctional epithelium will be on the root uh, here the fourth stage is the base of the gingival sulcus and the junctional epithelium are on the root. Uh, it is given by Gottlieb and Orban. Okay, the four steps of passive eruption is given by Gottlieb and Orban. These are the four steps. Therefore, the answer will be the passive eruption is divided into four stages. Uh, it is given by Gottlieb and Orban. Okay, next is the lamina dura. Lamina dura is a dense radio opaque line around the roots seen in the radiograph okay um lamina dura is a dense radio opaque line okay it's a dense radio opaque line that is seen in the radiograph okay radio this is just a radiographic image in the radiographic form of alveolar bone proper okay The cells responsible for degradation of organic matters include uh, during bone resorption are osteoclast, fibroblast, mononuclear cells, all of the above. Okay, osteoclast um, play major role in the degradation of organic matters. Okay, actually, in, uh, fibroblast also play a role in the degradation of organic matters. Mononuclear cells are converted into osteoclast on stimulation by um osteoblast okay on simulation by osteoblast the mononuclear cells will be turned into osteoblast then only it undergoes uh or degradation of first inorganic matter this is followed by degradation of organic matter also therefore uh, all the three will fit for the above question okay osteoclast fibroblast and the mononuclear cells all are responsible for degradation of organic matter during bone resorption answer should be d Attachment apparatus of the tooth is composed of uh, actually the supporting structures of the tooth. Okay, supporting structures of the tooth include gingiva, periodontal ligament, cementum, and alveolar bone. When we are coming to attachment apparatus, okay, attachment apparatus of the tooth is composed of periodontal ligament, cementum, and alveolar bone. Attachment apparatus is composed of periodontal ligament, uh, cementum, and alveolar bone, whereas gingiva will cover. These structures, okay, the gingiva will just give you a protection for the attachment apparatus. It won't be included in the attachment apparatus, whereas the periodontal ligament, cementum, and alveolar bone are all included in the attachment apparatus of the tooth. Option should be D. Alveolar process is formed, okay, alveolar process is formed before the tooth eruption. At the time of tooth eruption or after the tooth eruption, none of the bone. The alveolar process is formed uh, before the tooth eruption. It's a wrong answer because the uh, alveolar process is formed only at the time of tooth eruption. And the tooth erupts, the alveolar process will also forms. Okay. Therefore, the option should be B. After the eruption of the teeth, alveolar process won't form. 
and before the eruption of teeth also alveolar process won't form the alveolar process form only at the time of tooth eruption therefore the option should be b thank you